Hello and welcome to another episode of Game Theory, the number one MMA DFS prep show in all of the land. I am your host, Monk, a.k.a. The Monk Matician. And in this very episode, we're going to be breaking down all 13 fights from UFC Vegas 78 from a DraftKings perspective. Guys, we've got some bangers on this card. Dos Anjos and Luque is the headliner. We've got Cub Swanson, Hakeem Dawadu, Chris Daukas moving down a weight class, Pollyanna Viana, Marcus McGee, JP Bays is on this card, Terrence McKinney on short notice. We've got a couple of good fights here, and I think this is a pretty good card for DraftKings, guys. So without further ado, hit the like, hit the sub on this channel, and let's get right in the fights. Before we get into the first fight of the night, the screen might look just a little different. I changed a bunch of the stats and a couple of the things around the perimeter here. We've got average fight time up top. I've also got a new thing I'm doing where I assign fighter styles based on their DraftKings percentages and what they score at distance to inside the distance. I basically broke it down, plotted it on a scatter point graph, broke it down into 12 categories, and that's what you are seeing down below for Juliana Miller this week, heavy grappling slash light striking. And I am in no way assigning the labels just off the top of my head head uh, according to fight tape or anything like that I didn't fucking do that. strictly a stat thing i'm just trying it out to see what happens that said the stats on this sheet are chosen for a reason and that is to give you the best possible information before you start building those gpp lineups guys every stat on the screen correlates directly with performance as far as a DraftKings score so i'm trying to give you the best of that i'm going to stay away from fight picks for the most part i might give picks and whatnot but really this is just a presentation of data so you can make the best possible choices when it comes to gpp GPP or cash roster construction. All that out of the way, the rest of the slide should be relatively short. Let's keep it moving. We've got debuting fighter, UFC debutante Luana Santos, 8,400 as the favorite against Juliana Miller at 7,800. Nothing too impressive uh, about Juliana Miller's numbers. Everything's pretty run of the mill. However, she did score 115 points against Brogan Walker in her UFC debut. That is relatively impressive. She did pay off her salary. I believe it was 8,300 that week. Then she was 9,400 against Veronica Hardy and uh, got absolutely, well, not demolished, but pretty handily beaten uh, in Veronica Hardy's return to the Octagon. Her last five strength to schedule, 56.48, which is absolutely terrible. You want to see this number about 70, and 56 is well, well below 70 when it comes to this stat. So last five strength to schedule, not good for Juliana Miller. Luana Santos, she's a debuting fighter. Like I said, no Dana White contender series fights. I don't have any stats for her. Her ceiling and floor is just the average for the division, and the last Last five strength of schedule is pretty bad at 62.25, but still six points better than Juliana Miller here. I don't really think I like this fight for DraftKings. There is nothing that's jumping off the page to me. If anything, I'm going to take this as a learning experience to see what Luana Santos can do, or if Juliana Miller can repeat her 115 point performance that she put up against Brogan Walker. But she has yet to land a takedown in the UFC. And actually, I changed the stat. It says takedown defense, and you will see it changed in future cards like on on this show like on s future slides i changed it like halfway through and i apparently forgot to go back and change it oh my god he made it but i changed takedown defense to takedown accuracy just because that's what scores points in DraftKings. You don't get points for takedown defense. Um, so I just decided to put the offense on there. So she has yet to land a takedown. Uh, controls only 55% of the grappling time. No round one finishes, wins or losses. So nothing really jumping off the page. I'll probably be fading this one a bit for DraftKings. And I swear the rest of the fights will be a lot shorter than this one now that I got all the rules out of the way. Promise me a million times that you will never do another rule. Next fight, we've got Damone Blackshear taking on late notice replacement Jose Johnson. We do not have salaries for this fight yet, so I have no idea what they will be. I haven't even looked to see what's open, honestly. I haven't really put too much thought into that yet this week. No salaries. Here are the available DraftKings stats that I have. Damone Blackshear, nothing really jumping off the page to me. Getting outstruck at distance. His takedown accuracy, just 23%. Controls less than 50% of the grappling time. Did score 114 points in his lone UFC win against Luan Lacerda, but took a loss to Farid Bashar 
Montserrat and took a draw on his UFC debut against Yusuf Zalal. Uh, the two stats that I do like when he did win, he more than paid off his salary at a 15.23 value, which is fantastic. He's only owned on average 14%, $7,500 salary on average. So he's probably going to be much more expensive this week. And you're just going to have to balance that out uh, with what, how you think he's going to perform. Like I said, in his only win, he scored incredibly well. Seven and a half strikes landed per minute in that one. I mean, landed a takedown, got taken down, but also controlled 25% of the fight. Looked pretty good in that one against Lacerda. And now he's got short notice Jose Johnson, who does have a Dana White contender series fight, but no actual UFC fights. So the stats you're seeing are from that DWCS fight. Nothing really jumping off the page. I mean, his overall pacing's pretty good at four and a half. His opponent's pacing also very good, over four points a minute. Uh, so we do like to see that for DraftKings when it comes to fights as a whole. Another new stat that I added, well, it's new to you guys, but not new to me. I brought back power index and chin index as well. Power index is how often you land knockdowns per significant strike landed. Chin index is the exact opposite, how often you get knocked down. And then sub index and what I'm calling chub decks let me know if you have any other uh, uh recommendations for a category name there it's the same thing as power and chindex except when it's related to subs uh how many subs you're attempting per takedown or how many subs get attempted on you per takedown attempted so that's kind of what that is and uh no no knockdowns either side of the jose johnson fight but there were some submissions thrown up which we do love to see anything that leads to a higher percent chance of finishing is what we want for DraftKings. last five strength of schedule not great at 67 but not terrible we're not in the 50s like we were in the last fight so nothing really jumping off the page here for jose johnson Damone blackshear's not exactly been impressive but he hasn't been disappointing either so i'm probably going to be fading this one a little bit but if anything i'll probably have shares of Blackshear just because he did score very well in his win and Jose Johnson is on super short notice as he just got announced for this fight Tuesday this week. Here we have a strawweight fight between Jacqueline Almarim and Montserrat Ruiz. Ruiz has not fought in over two years since she took an L to Amanda Lemos back in July of 2021. Beat Cheyenne Vlismas in her UFC debut. Scored almost 103 points in that win. At distance, she's getting completely outpaced. One and a half points a minute to five per, for her opponent. So we do like to see that for her opponent. Uh, at least, you know, she can be scored on. Inside the distance, she's doubling up her opponent. Um, scores very well and she wins and gave up a ton of points when she lost to Amanda Lemos. 128 is what Lemos scored in that fight. Damn! This is green because we definitely want to have parts of Montserrat Ruiz fights since they score very well no matter what side that you're on. 80% uh, takedown accuracy controls almost 90% of the grappling time. She's been 23% owned on average at 7K, and she's only $100 more than her average salary average value per win in her one win her value was 14.51 fantastic she did get knocked down has yet to knock anyone down and has a bit of a subpar strength of schedule overall balanced grappling when it comes to scoring and low at distance scoring for Montserrat Ruiz so she is taking on as I said Jacqueline Amarim who lost her UFC debut to Sam Hughes after everyone and their mom told me that she was going to win by submission wrong uh, she did have Sam Hughes up, you know, in a couple of subs in that one, but Sam just powered through and ended up turning the tables, winning that fight. Now she's $9,100 this week after a decision loss to Sam Hughes. None of her stats in the Hughes fight are jumping off the table. She was 9K against Hughes. Now she's $100 more expensive. Didn't even score two points a minute, 20% takedown accuracy, controlled less than 35% of the grappling time, threw up a, a couple of subs, which is good. She, you know, she's trying to finish the fight, which is a good sign, uh, but other than that there are no good stats here for Amarim. It should also be noted that Ruiz is probably the shortest fighter in the UFC, listed at five foot even with a 61 inch reach. Where's the rest? Yeah, where's the rest? So we'll see if that comes into play. I'm sure she'll be launching in for takedowns head first. So maybe Amarim can catch her in a little guillotine action, something like that. We will have to see. I think I am going to play a little bit of this fight uh, when it comes to DraftKings. Like I said, Ruiz is either scoring tons of points or giving up a ton of points. So I do like that, which means I'll play I'll play Ruiz and I will also play a bit of Amarim, hoping to see a finish in this one. And at straw weight, you should be able to find some leverage there over the field. At 8,800, we have Martin Boudet taking on Josh Parisian, 7,400. Long story short, look at all the red on the screen, guys. If there was ever a heavyweight fight to fade, 
it is a Martin Boudet fight, and it is this fight against Josh Parisian. Mm. Ah. I mean, neither guy scores well at all, basically. I mean, Parisian scores almost 100 points per win. Uh, he put up 119 against Badeau, which is fantastic, but it is Alan Badeau. And he put up only 78 against Roque Martinez, so a bit up and down there against some very subpar competition. Parisian getting outpaced everywhere. The only good stats I'm seeing is his ceiling and his floor. Pretty decent at 120 and 43 and a half. Bonus points per win at 50. Every other stat is either average or below average. Strength of schedule at 67. Average value per win is decent at 12, but he only has two wins uh, and only one of them really paid off. No power index, no submission index, 33% takedown accuracy, just no good stats for Parisian. Then you look up at Martin Boudet. You're like, well, at least with Parisian, I got 99 points per win. Boudet's at 76 and a half. Three straight decisions and three straight UFC fights. Average ownership, and this is crazy. I have to look at this because this can't even be, I mean, maybe it's right. I don't know. 36% average ownership for Martin Boudet at 86.33 average salary. And he's 8,800 this week. A poor strength of schedule. At least he scored a knockdown at heavyweight, unlike his opponent here. Controls 66% of the grappling time. Other than that, his average value per win over three wins isn't even nine. 8.87 average value is very below average, uh, especially for wins. There are no good stats here. Now they want me to pay $8,800 for Martin Boudet. I'm just going to fade this fight overall. Uh, I will have more Parisian rostered in GPPs than I will Martin Boudet. Uh, I'd be shocked if Boudet scores more than like 90 points. What do you put up? 81 against Collier, 56 against Breschke, and 91 against Chris Barnett. So yeah, I'd be pretty surprised if he hit that 90 point mark again, and he's $8,800. So big fade overall for this fight, but I guess give me the underdog for DraftKings and yeah this is a this is a go get some food fight go out for a smoke whatever you like to do do that during this fight And here we have another debuting fighter in Isaac Dolgarian. His ceiling and his floor is just the average for the division and his last five strength the schedule is awful like super bad like the worst on the entire card, 46.08, guys. You at least want it to be 50 if we're talking bad strength of schedules. We're not even there yet. And we haven't even gotten to Marshall yet, who's also sub 50 when it comes to strength of schedule. So yeah, I've got no stats for Dolgarian. He is 5-0 in his professional career with three KOTKO wins and two submission wins. Uh, so yeah, I have no stats for Dolgarian here. His opponent this week, Francis Fire Marshall. Don't worry, folks. I'm a fire marshal. Actually has some pretty good DraftKings stats. That I should say stats that I am interested in uh, when it comes to rostering people for DraftKings. He's outpacing his opponent 2-1. to one. That said, not scoring very well at all. 2.74 points a minute. Inside the distance over 4 and allowing less than half a point per minute. Did put up over 100 points, just barely, in his one UFC win. And does control 96% of all grappling time he's involved in. Lands over two takedowns per 15 minutes. Scored 70 bonus points. He was 9K, or actually he is 9K on average so far, and he's one and one. Lost to Gomez at 9,200. Beat Marcelo Rojo, and he was 8,800. No round one finish, wins or losses. Has a good power index and a good sub index as well. Terrible strength of schedule. Just really, really bad. And it's still three and a half points better than Isaac Dolgarian, guys. This one could be a shit show. Um, you might just want to roster this one because who knows what could happen with an Isaac Dolgarian fight. 5-0 and guy. Both guys have fought pretty much nobodies for the most part. In their last five, they have just terrible, terrible strength of schedules. I like the numbers, obviously, from Marshall. A little bit better for DraftKings, so I don't mind rostering this fight at all. Just trust there are some definite unknowns when it comes to Francis Marshall and Isaac Dolgarian. Hopefully this will end in a finish just because there are so many unknowns, and then we can uh, somehow profit off of that. That's kind of how I'll look to play this. And I will be interested to see what the ownerships are going to be, especially on Isaac Dolgarian. I wonder what people think of him, if he'll be pretty low owned. Maybe we can find some sort of leverage on that. 7,700, a great salary to play. 8,500, also a decent salary. Both very good mid-range salaries for GBP tournaments. Definitely a fight I will be looking to target, but it's just a complete crapshoot. I'm rolling the dice. So sad. So sad. So, 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 so sad. And just hoping for some crazy knockout from either side here that scores very well. Here we have a fight I am extremely interested in for DraftKings. Terrence McKinney, who just fought, I believe, a month ago? Not even a month ago. Three weeks ago from today, basically. July 15th, he took that L against Nazim Sadikov. But look at all the green on the screen, guys. This is a DraftKings player's dream. You gotta roster one 
or both of these guys. Both of them score a ton of points. Both of them give up a ton of points when they lose. There's points aplenty in McKinney and, and Money Mike Breeden fights here. I mean, look at the pacing from McKinney. Almost five points a minute everywhere. And his opponents are going crazy, especially at distance on him. Averaging 109 points is what McKinney scores per win. Super high ceiling at 122. 98 bonus points per win. Two of his three wins over 100 points. I mean, three and a half takedowns per 15 minutes. Controls a shitload of the grappling time. Average salary is just 7,900, which is good, but his average ownership is 43%. So if you're looking to gain leverage with Terrence McKinney, you're going to have to pay 9,200 this week, and you're going to have to go way over the 40% mark, I would imagine. Uh, average value per win, though, worth it at 13.5. All three of his wins, first round finish wins, and one of his losses was a first round L as well. His power index and chin index are off the charts high. Same with his sub index and his chub decks. I, I, I don't think I like that. I'm going to have to change that. I don't even want to be around anymore. In a decent last five strength of schedule. Meanwhile, Money Mike, tons of points from him and his opponents. I mean, inside the distance, he's allowing over 10 and a half points per minute. His opponents are scoring 113, almost 114 on him per loss. I mean, you got a, two, two, almost three takedowns Per 15 minutes, just a small number less than Terrence McKinney. Average salary of 7K, and his average ownership is just 12%, guys. So if you want to fade Terrence McKinney, this is the guy to do it with, hopefully. I'm not saying he beats Terrence McKinney by any means. I'm just saying there are a ton of points in McKinney fights, and you know McKinney loves to get finished when he loses. So just saying, not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's, it looks good for DraftKings. Strength of schedule leaves a bit to be desired. No power index for Breed, no sub index, and he has been knocked down before. All the greed on the screen speaks for itself. I can't say any more about this fight. Play this fight. Get some leverage with both of these guys, in my opinion. Just get them in your lineups. Hopefully, the winner will finish the fight and make the optimal lineup. Here we've got Marcus McGee in his second UFC fight coming off of a big win against Journey Newsom in his UFC debut. I believe it was even a short notice debut if I'm, uh, my memory serves me correctly. Taking on J.P. Bays. Yes, he is still around. Young, savage J.P. Bays. Three straight losses, Cody Durden, Montel Jackson, and Bruno Silva. There are many numbers that are not good for J.P. Bays here. You know, it's with all respect. His overall pacing is horrible. Less than one and a half points per minute everywhere. Overall at distance, inside the distance, it is not pretty. And also he's giving up 125 points per loss. 125 points per loss. Play JP Bay's opponent. That's what you need to do. He is the Estella Nunez of this week, it seems like. Uh, Marcus McGee, 9,600 most expensive fighter on the card. Actually, we're not done with Bay's. Bay's does have a few good numbers. His average ownership is just 18%, but I mean, it should be. It should be less than that because he's not doing anything at all uh, his chin dex is crazy high you want this number to be zero it is 9.4 it does hurt actually the only thing he has going for him is, is his last five strength the schedule is not terrible and he does throw up submissions has a decent submission index which you do like to see at least he's going for stuff that's the one thing you can say for jp bays and if you do like him this week you can easily get some leverage by going 20 25 percent you'd be well over the field if that was the case so high over the, he might not even be 10 percent owned this week to be completely honest marcus mcgee most expensive fighter on the card as i said got his debut win against journey newsome has a good power index but still these stats have to be taken with a grain of salt he only fought for seven minutes against Newsom. there has a decent pacing at distance inside the distance not great uh could be a little better but it's pretty even with his opponent scored less than 91 points in that debut win he was only 7200 that week but he did pay off that salary so i like marcus mcgee here i think jp bays loves to give up points i just don't like the fact that mcgee is 9600 i think there's still a chance for him to score very well so i will have a little bit of him i think i will be rostering a bit of marcus mcgee at 9600 i'd be interested to see what his ownership is this week it'll probably be 35 percent or so if i had to guess just off the top of my head um um, we might even see it higher than that just because JB Bays gives up so many points, and that's what people are going to be looking at. So I don't disagree with the odds here. I mean, 9,600 for McGee's probably worth it when you look at Bay's stats. That said, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get to him, but I really don't think Bay's gets it done here. I like Marcus McGee to win. I'll probably be picking him, and I will be putting some of him in my lineups for sure. I just need to figure out what percentage that's going to be. I don't know if I'll be where the field is, though, when it comes to like 30, 35%.
and here's the moment you've all been waiting for. We have another Jamie Pickett fight. Well, no. Let's just start there. There are so many red numbers when it comes to Jamie Pickett. He can't score points, like two points a minute, if that. 65 points per win. I guess we'll round up. 66 points per win on average in his two UFC wins. He put up 66 against Ugly Man Holmes and 65 against Loriano Staropoli. And then uh, rattled off three straight losses. So no wins over 100, obviously, as I just said. Barely lands one takedown per 15 minutes. Average value per win is less than nine. His only good stats here, 14% average ownership. So if for some reason you want to play Jamie Pickett, you won't need to roster a bunch of him to get well over the field and he's over $700 cheaper than his average salary of $7,500. No first round finish wins, but in three of his five UFC losses, he has been finished in the first round. So definitely get some of Jamie Pickett's opponents in your lineup. Terrible chin decks as he has been knocked around and he's had several submissions put up against him as well. Less than 70 strength of schedule. Yeah, not much here for Jamie Pickett. Not much to go on. Uh, I will be looking elsewhere when it comes to DraftKings underdogs this week. Josh Fremd, 9,800. The only question is how well does he score? Because Pickett on average across his five losses has given up 111 points per loss. So definitely looking at Josh Fremd here because Pickett also, as I said, been finished three times in the first round. At distance, Fremd outpacing his opponents 3.3 to 2. He did score 109 points in his UFC win. Lands one and a half takedowns per 15 minutes. Controls only 36% of the grappling time. Looked pretty decent against Cedric Dumas in Dumas' uh, UFC debut. And then Dumas looked okay against, I believe it was, Cody Brundage in his last fight. Uh, average value per win for Josh Fremd, which is just one win. 14.76, so a very good number paid off that $7,400 salary. Has a decent last five strength of schedule. Not much jumping off the page from Josh Fremd. Honestly, I think we're probably overpaying for him at $9,400 relative to how he's going to perform when it comes to DraftKings. But that said, he is taking on Jamie Pickett who loves to get finished in the first round, who loves to give up DraftKings points. So I don't like that Fremd is at $9,400, but I will have to play him just because Jamie Pickett is so bad when it comes to DraftKings and just gives up points like candy. So give me some of Fremd at 9,400. I'm really interested to see what his ownership is going to be this week because if it's over 30%, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get over the field on that. So I might have to just give him the super fade at that point and hope Pickett can just make this one go three rounds. Tafan and Chukwi, 8,400, taking on A.J. Dobson at 7,800. Let's start with A.J. Dobson. Almost all of his numbers are supremely lackluster, barely scoring two points a minute across the board. At distance, it's less than that. No win so far, 0-2 in the UFC, dropping losses to Jacob Malkoon and Armin Petrosian. Controlled just 12% of all grappling time he's involved in. Has given up on average 103.26 points per loss, so we do like to see that for his opponent. 26% ownership overall. No power index, no chin index, no submissions, has an awful, awful strength of schedule of 57.61. There is nothing. There are no green stats here. Believe me, I looked. I tried to find one, and there is not one that I could turn green here. AJ Dobson, not great so far in the UFC, and has turned out to be a terrible DraftKings performer as well. So I'm not really looking to roster any of him at all. I feel like if Tafan and Chukwi does lose, he doesn't give up a ton of points. 85 on average is all he gives up. So I'm not too interested in AJ Dobson at 7,800. Let's take a look at the numbers for Tafan and Chukwi. Six points a minute inside the distance is fantastic, giving up only three. Ceiling is a bit low. Less than 106, and a floor is pretty much average for the division. Is two and three in the UFC, so two wins, 103 points on average. He put up 105 against slow Mike Rodriguez and 101 against the aforementioned Jamie Pickett. Controls 62% of all grappling time he's involved in. Both of his UFC wins are decision wins, but they have both, as I said, scored over 100 points. Average ownership is 28%, and his average salary is 81.50. So you are paying 250 over his average for Nchukwi here. Dobson does give up, like I said, 103 points per loss. So if Tafan wins, hopefully we can, you know, if he scores 103, 104, 107 points or so at 8,400, we would definitely like to see that, and he would pretty much pay off his salary. Power index is there, but not really where you want it, and his chin index is a bit too high for me. 72.5, last five strength of schedule. So nothing really jumping off the page as far as Tafan and Chukwi goes, but I think I do like him for the win here. I just don't know how he's going to score. I mean, he does average 103 per win, and Dobson gives up 103 per loss. At 8,400, like I said, that might not be a bad deal, so... 
probably worth it to get some Tafan in your lineups this week because even though he has yet to finish a UFC fight, he has scored over triple digits in both of his decision wins. So triples makes it safe. Now triples is best. Yeah. That's good. Stop. Give me in Chukwi and um, yeah, big fade on Dobson. I think overall, if that comes back to bite me, that's fine. But nothing historically is telling me that he's going to do well when it comes to DraftKings. The strawweight fights this week are pretty good for DraftKings as far as I'm concerned. Yasmin Lucindo, 8,700, not a ton of great numbers. Inside the distance, though, nine points per minute, allowing less than three. But in her one UFC win, she did only score 73 points. And that was against Brogan Walker back in April. Controls over 50% of the grappling time she's involved in. No power, no chin, blah, blah, blah. Last five strength of schedule is awful at less than 61. Nothing too impressive from Yasmin Lucindo, except that inside the distance scoring, which I am a bit interested in. 57% takedown accuracy, very good. Two takedowns landed per 15 minutes. I also love that. That's an extra 10 points per decision win. Meanwhile, Pollyanna Viana has a ton of green numbers. And honestly, it's not her pace. That is relatively average to subpar. Her ceiling is very good. Also a decent floor at 41. 96 bonus points per win, guys. She's 4-4 four and four in the UFC. Four wins, 96 bonus points per win. Three of her four wins have scored her 100 points or more. 13.87 average value. All four of her UFC wins have come in the very first round. One of her four losses have, has also come in the first round. So we love to see that. We're going to be playing Pollyanna Viana, and we are going to be playing her opponent, specifically for that reason her power and chindex just what you want to see for DraftKings. she's knocking people down and she is getting knocked down as well extra 10 points a piece for that submission index very good at three has had a submission or, or two put up against her very bad strength of schedule under 62 guys this is a perfect scenario for a sneaky sneaky fight that will be under owned when it comes to DraftKings. okay especially on the Lucindo side at 8,700. But we're getting all these huge numbers from Pollyanna Viana at 7,500. By huge numbers, I mean an extremely high round one finish rate. Extremely high DraftKings points per win at 110. At 7,500, I would classify that as extremely high. Three of her four wins over 100. I already read these stats, but they're so impressive. I'm reading them again, so... Nobody likes to play women's fights, especially straw weights. You can definitely find some leverage here. And I do think the winner has a great chance of scoring well. The only thing that I, is kind of holding me back from going absolutely crazy on this fight is Lucinda only allowed 65 points when she lost in Viana on average her four losses giving up just 81.8 so neither woman allows a ton and Lucindo doesn't even score a ton when she wins but the finish rate for Pollyanna Viana cannot be overlooked and for that reason I will be playing both sides of this fight and I think we're getting a good price at a possible sneaky underdog here at 7500. Light heavyweight scrap between Khalil Roundtree and Chris Daukas. Let's start with Roundtree. Look ahead if you want to Chris Daukas and all the green that's down there. So let's start with Roundtree. 8,900. Pacing leaves a lot to be desired, especially inside the distance. Just over one point a minute, allowing six and a half. Does have triple digits, DraftKings points per win at seven UFC wins. Also in his five UFC losses, allowing 103 points per loss. So we definitely like to play Roundtree fights as both sides score over 100 points when they win on average average controls less than nine percent of the grappling there should be no grappling in this fight absolutely none roundtree's average ownership just under 30 percent and his average salary is 8200 and we have to pay 700 dollars over that this week to roster him power index is huge at just under three has been knocked down before but not many times last five strength the schedule is just under 70 and look at all these round one finish wins and losses 43 percent so three of his seven wins in the UFC have been first round finishes and three of his five losses in the UFC have been first round finishes as well. So you're going to want to play Roundtree for that stat and the DraftKings points per win and opponents DraftKings points per loss. Love to see that in the triple digits. Now let's look at all the green for Daukas. I know this is his first fight at light heavyweight. He is moving down. You ordered Diet Coke. That's a joke, right? He was always a super light heavyweight though. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? 
right? Like 220 pounds, weighing in 230 pounds, something like that. Uh, but look at his pacing, well over five points a minute everywhere. Inside the distance, it's almost eight points a minute. DraftKings points per win over his four wins is almost 120. And over his three losses, he is giving up almost 110 points per loss. 91.25 bonus points per win, all four of his wins over 100. Controls 80% of the grappling time he's involved in. Average value per win is fantastic at 13.7. His average ownership is a bit high at 36%. Average salary just 8,000, and we are paying $700 under this week for Chris Daukus. Three of his four wins, round one finish wins. Two of his three losses, round one fin I mean, I could go on and on. His power index is crazy high. Chindex is also crazy high. Has a good strength of schedule. I mean, man, you, you've you got to play Chris Daukus fights for his offensive capabilities and his defensive inabilities. Giving up points left and right, scoring tons of points. There are tons of first round finish wins and losses between these two. Triple digits across the board when it comes to DraftKings scoring and tons of pacing when it comes to the Chris Daukus side. I'm definitely rostering this fight. I suggest you do the same. Both sides, doesn't matter. I'll be probably a bit higher on Daukus than I will be on Roundtree just because he's so cheap but you have to roster this fight. I really think the winner is going to score very well and uh, could creep towards that optimal spot. Co-main event of the evening, probably one I don't have a huge problem with fading. Hakeem Dawadu at $9,000. I mean, what are we getting here? About two and a half points a minute everywhere. Doesn't allow a ton of points except for inside the distance. 75.76 DraftKings points per win on average across six UFC wins. Does give up a ton, a metric ton of points. 120 per loss over three UFC losses, has a terrible ceiling at 91, an okay floor at 36, only one of his UFC wins over 100 points. I mean, controls less than 35% of all grappling time he's involved in, terrible average value, only 17% owned, which is interesting because he is 9K this week. He's gonna be well over that, in my opinion, probably well over 20%. So I think a fade is pretty safe here. I mean, not much power, nothing for submissions. Last five strength the schedule is very good at 77, but other than that, there is no stat that I wanted to turn green here. The only other stat that comes off the page is 120 points allowed per loss. And at that rate, I'm looking at Cub Swanson and not Hakeem Dawadu. Speaking of Cub Swanson, $7,200 this week, 39 years old, almost 40 in less than three months. Cub Swanson will be 114 point ceiling is pretty good but other than that there are no good stats just like Hakeem Dawadu you know we're at 95 points per win which is 20 points better than Hakeem Dawadu but still I mean at 7200 that'll get you on the optimal lineup possibly you generally you like to see that over triple digits 38 and a half percent of his wins over 100 points 29 percent of all grappling time he's involved in Cub Swanson is controlling average value per win is less than 11 really Cub gets subbed Orange, four inch, door hinge. <laughs> That's that's the theme for this fight. Cub gets subbed. He has been submitted seven times in his pro career. That said, Hakeem Dawadu has no submission wins in his UFC career. Cub Swanson has been KO'd twice. It's happened twice in the last three fights. Giga Chikadze in just over a minute and Jonathan Martinez in the second round. So maybe something to look at there. That said, Hakeem Dawadu more of a uh, decision or split decision type guy. So I'm not really expecting to finish. I think this one is a pretty safe fade in my opinion. Uh, if anything, it'll be Swanson, you know, showing his age at 39 and maybe getting you know getting finished but you know outside of that how could you possibly play Hakeem Dawadu so I think that's probably about where I'll have him to be honest and I know the field will probably be closer to 20 or 25 so I think I'm pretty safe going a bit under here especially at 9k there's just other fighters that I like that have so much more DraftKings potential so much more fun than what Hakeem Dawadu has shown across nine UFC fights so far main event of the evening guys hit the like hit the sub on this channel as we are getting closer and closer to 500 subs i think we're like five away so i just need five of you just five of you to click that sub button love this main event for DraftKings. rafael dos anjos 8200 dollars this week against vicente luque 8k vicente luque coming off of uh, a pretty scary thing brain bleed after that jeff neal fight definitely something you do not take lightly that was back in august of 22 so this is almost exactly a year to the day since that Jeff Neal fight. So we will have to see how Luque does. 31 years old for Vicente Luque, 38 for Rafael Dos Anjos. He is showing no signs of slowing down though. I couldn't find my camera. I'm, I'm panicking. I'm like, where, where to go? Oh, I don't know how to work the body. 
it's in the same spot it always is. Showing no signs of slowing down is Rafael Dos Anjos. I love his numbers for DraftKings. His pacing is pretty average overall, but he is outpacing his opponents everywhere. DraftKings points per win across 21 UFC wins is 105. And when he loses, this is across 12 losses, 102.37 is what he gives up. You gotta love those numbers. You gotta play Rafael Dos Anjos fights, and it's green for a reason. He scores a ton, and when he loses, his opponents score a ton, and that's what we are looking for. Very good ceiling and floor, almost 50 floor, just what you love to see. Bonus points per win, almost 52 across 21 wins. 57%. So what is that? 12, I think that's 12 wins out of 21 UFC wins over 100. 36% takedown accuracy over two takedowns landed per 15 minutes. Controls 56% of all grappling time he's involved in. His average ownership is very high since 2021, 43%. His average salary just 8K and we're right there this week at 8,200. Average value per win is a fantastic 12 and a half. You'd like to see that a bit higher, but come on, over 21 wins, that's ridiculous. 24% uh, round one finish win rate, very, very good, and a pretty good strength of schedule there at 71.79. So I love the numbers overall from Dos Anjos. Like I said, rather pedestrian when it comes to pacing, but when he does win, scores a ton. When he loses, gives up a ton. Majority of those wins are in triple digits. Vicente Luque, on the other hand, getting outpaced overall, but at distance is pretty good. Inside the distance, not so much, almost two to one for his opponents. But the same thing as Hafi Dos Anjos. When, when Luque wins across 14 UFC wins, 107 points scored. When he loses over five losses, 101 points. 26 given up good ceiling solid floor 77 bonus points per win guys and 78 percent of all of those wins are over 100 points controls only 38 percent of all grappling time he's involved in 41 percent average ownership and his average salary is 600 higher than rafael dos anjos this week average value is a very respectable 12.15 57 percent of all of his wins i think that's eight wins eight out of 14 wins are round one finish wins for luke Never been finished in the first round. Power index is great. Sub index is fantastic at 1.5 and has a great strength of schedule at 76 and a half. I like this fight for DraftKings, guys. I mean, the pacing is not where you want it, but the points overall per win, per loss, well over 100 across the board. And this is a five round fight. Five round fights, someone makes the optimal lineup over 61% of the time. So you got to love that trend as well. But again, overall, Love this fight for DraftKings and at 8,200 and 8K, you have no problem getting either one of these guys in your lineups. I don't know about a stack. I just think whoever wins is going to probably look relatively dominant, whether that's Luke via submission, which I do not really expect. Dos Anjos only been subbed once in his UFC or in his pro career, actually. I think no matter how this one ends, the winner could score very well. And at these very cheap salaries, guys, you really have to play this five round fight. I don't know about the stack, really. Luke scored 38, almost 39 points in that loss to Neil, and also 38 points against Bilal Muhammad. So if you think this one goes all five rounds and Dos Anjos scores well over 100 points, maybe you could get something. But I think at 8K, there's probably better options that you could find that are going to score more than 40 points. So I don't necessarily know if a stack is a good idea this week. I think just pick one of these guys outright and get both of them in your lineups. Because as I said, these, num these scoring numbers are are very, very good, triple digits across the board, and the salaries are such that you will easily be able to fit them in. Add to that five round fight and you've got yourself a recipe for a big score in a win, decision or finish. We did it guys, all 13 fights taken care of, showed you the most pertinent stats in order for you to properly construct some of those GPP lineups and get those takedowns this week. Before we get out of here, let's throw it over to Monk and get CM Monk's picks for UFC Vegas 78. <sighs> Here are CM Monk's picks for UFC Vegas 78. If you don't know, CM Monk is this thing I built that's supposed to pick fights well, and it has been completely failing at that in recent weeks, that's for sure. Last week going just 4 of 12, 33% overall, 58% on the year that is terrible i think me personally i am at 61 or so percent something like that so rubbing it in see monk's face from week to week lately i can't let you get close here are his picks ufc vegas 78 juliana miller 
by decision. Jose Johnson by finish. Interesting. Uh, that should be an underdog pick. Actually, actually, I don't have odds on that, so it's probably not Jose Johnson. I just don't have any odds. Uh, Montserrat Ruiz, underdog uh, against Amarim by decision. Martin Boudet, decision. Francis Marshall, decision. Terrence McKinney by finish. Marcus McGee by finish over J.P. Bays. Josh Fremd by finish. Tafan and Chokwi by decision. Yasmin Lucindo by finish. Chris Daukis by finish. Cub Swanson getting it done early over Hakeem Dawadu inside the distance. And then in the main event, Rafael Dos Anjos getting it done by decision and hopefully putting up an absolutely gigantic number when it comes to DraftKings this week. Those are CM Monk's picks for UFC Vegas 78. Let's throw it to Monk. Find out the Monk pick of the week. Most owned, no nonsense for UFC Vegas 78. Got a button in the middle, make truck go. Man, last week's Monk Pick of the Week paid off huge with Corey Sanhagen at 9,300. I think he put up like 133 points. We have a chance to repeat that this week, but at a much cheaper salary. My pick for the most owned, no-nonsense Monk Pick of the Week, UFC Vegas 78, is going to be the $8,200 Rafael Dos Anjos. This dude put up 113 against Barbarena, 154 against Moicano, and 135 against Paul Felder. Going absolutely crazy lately, but especially in five-round decision wins. I'm looking for another one of those against Vicente Luque this week. I think in a win, Rafael Dos Anjos easily pays off that salary, makes the optimal lineup and scores well over 100 points if you missed the breakdown of that fight go back five minutes and watch it you gotta play this main event this week and i like the rafael dos Anjo side at 8200 the monk pick of the week most owned no nonsense for ufc vegas 78 i'm honestly done i, I don't want to read anymore we did it all 13 fights broken down from a DraftKings perspective showing you the most pertinent stats that i can give you to help construct those gpp lineups and fatten those wallets this weekend guys we've got a few very big fights to target love the main event this week as well and as usual i want all of you to enjoy the fight so enjoy and we will see you in the next one i love this stuff only come here if you like that stuff